you had a bunch of Bay Area hippies playing, smoking, scribbling, throwing dice, and pumping it into Stafford's mimeograph machine in his garage and calling it another oh, yeah. one, right? That's right. what was going on, and it went on for like 10 years solid. And you end up with, you know, this work. And you, in that circumstance, you're bound to get a few artifacts. You, you're going to get beautifully playable material, <laughs> and you're going to get some artifacts, just, just how it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really kick about that. And I actually really do, you probably know, I really do like the spunky, crude, and utterly playable Holmes tradition of D&D. <laughs> and it is an artifact of, it's a, it's a chance feature of my own history that I never saw a copy of Mulvey. I never right. saw one. So the whole BX thing, I just never, I never even noticed it. Um, whereas to a lot of other people, I mean, that's the Bible. I mean, that's, that is D&D for a lot of people. So, um, but so having played Holmes when I was a kid and then in college coming across the 1985 Menser red box, it was really weird. I was like, what happens to my underground comics? What happens to, you know, crazy D&D? And, um, and I saw, and I look back at, I mean, I've, I've played Holmes and I like it and it's kooky and you have to spitball stuff all the yeah. time, but it does do what it does. It, it performs as advertised, if that's the right word. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it really was painful in the mid to late eighties when I suddenly realized that the games had lost that, that they had become something else. The text had become something yeah. else. Um, and so when we look at these, this math and the percentages and stuff like that, I think we always need to be on the lookout for when in play, they really perform, they do things. They, they, they give, do you know the term I right. keep using all the time? Bounce, right? Yes. Bounce. That's yes. just the feeling. They, the, the mechanics are providing bounce. You roll the dice not because it's supposed to represent how good you are and therefore succeed. You roll the dice because you won't, very likely. It is very possible that you will not. And that's where we're at when we're playing. And it's a, it has been really powerful to watch people at Adept's Play embrace that. Before, before I did that Whoops Monday Lab, nobody had thought about it. We did that Monday Lab... Oh. And all of a sudden, everybody was like, fuck yeah, failure. Let's, mm -hmm. let's play it. When it happens, let's play it, right? And that, everybody that lab said, was an absolute yeah. epiphany, yeah. Uh, for real. It, uh, it was for me, too. I've been doing this how long? And it was for me, too, just like two years ago, right? Crazy. Right. So, And it makes, I mean... Or we're gonna have to schedule another conversation. I unfortunately have to sign off soon, but this has been lovely. Right. But I was say, you know, when I when I first looked at RQG, uh, you know, coming out of like I've been, I've been playing some Burning Wheel, mm -hmm. um, even even Champions, you know, on some level, like uh, where, where success is a bit more defined, you know, and in RQG, there. I don't think they even mentioned failure, you know, right. it's, but I realize like that, that creates this really great space for design at the table, you know, and if, uh, if you do it, if you don't get there, then you get excuse making and roll again and all that stuff. Right. Or, you know, you, you fail to, you fail to find it, but, Oh, look, you stumble over it. You know, that sort of thing. It is about time. I think for attention at Adept's Play to really start. Like, I want to look back on the last three years with everybody and say, where have huge questions arisen, which we suddenly realized are immense questions, right? <sighs> where are these topics that we've investigated through play? And suddenly we all said, wait a minute, random character creation can be awesome. Who knew? 
Um, or wait a minute, it's not, you know, it's, it's realism isn't achieved by representation. Realism is achieved by how you talk about what happened. Right. So it's stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And, and to say, let's, let's actually look at what we've experienced and, you know, maybe we can sort of turn a corner to create something of a library of thought, mm -hmm. you know, so far. So I'm kind of thinking along those lines right now. Teaching the classes is helping me organize my thoughts for that. Um, so what you guys are doing with these two games is very instructive, I think. Um, and I, I get all the all the whoops. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a what does not mean you can't you can't make things happen. It just right. means that things happen <laughs> through right. failure. You know. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I got to go. So I will see you later on. Thank you for joining me. Right. And uh, yeah. of course, thanks. Excellent. I look forward to whenever, whenever, no rush, whenever you feel like posting and talking about stuff, you know, go right ahead. So um, one of these days, do, so, a, do a seminar of your own one of these days, right? You know, it's great when other people do seminars. Um, good. Absolutely. Yeah. Take care. I'll see you.